room, you can't make room for like yeah, if your house. Okay. I do have some <laughs> demands. Yeah. Can we have quiet on set? Thank you. Um, I want final cut. I want at some point to be able to say, I, can we take a break? I want at some point to say something so profound that I get to say, let me say that again. Mm. Welcome back to Made It Out. Before we get started today, I have a big announcement. We are finally launching merch. So today, right now, you can go over to our website, www.madeitoutpodcast.com and look at our products, which are made by my dad. <laughs> He's been texting me since literally week one of the podcast. He has an embroidery machine and he was like, Mallory, you need merch. So it's a product made with a lot of love. And as part of our efforts to continue to support the community, we are donating 10% of merch profits to Campaign for Southern Equality. It works out so perfect because today our guest Jacqueline Taboni does a lot of work with them and was the one who suggested that we partner with them. They're great. They're great. I'm so happy that you guys uh, went with them and you're from Texas. So I feel like um, it worked out well. Yeah. I mind. will say I'm like in love with your dad, that he is just <laughs> so overly supportive and doing something like that, I, I guess, like is kind of feminine. <laughs> He's like, I am broader. I would like to help you with your merch sales. And I also feel an odd connection to your dad because we both came from baseball families. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like, I would like to meet him and yeah. shake his hand and maybe get some free embroidery out of it. <laughs> Some free, merch. Merch. <laughs> Some free merch. And that's actually so perfect. My dad is very comfortable in his gender expression, which is what we're talking about today. It is. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that about your dad. It, it takes a long time. Or yeah. it did for me, at least. How were you expressing yourself and your gender as a kid? Flamboyantly masculine. <laughs> like, just like really hard. Like, out like there. Like, typical outfit was basketball shorts with no shirt I like specifically remember I mean I was young right so it was like fine but, but like, I why do I need this yeah I specifically remember like the day that my mom was like you gotta start wearing shirt. <laughs> it was pre-puberty or anything but I was like why would I have to do that like Paul doesn't have to wear a shirt not like realizing I had no like gender dysphoria but I have three older brothers and I definitely like grew up on handy downs but my sister's clothes didn't interest me and I was like, I, I would like, it was just all about utility for me. Mm -hmm. It was like, I want to climb a tree. I can't do that. And these like tight jeans, you yeah. know, whatever. And so that was, it was like a lot of shorts and t-shirts when I had to. <laughs> <laughs> when necessary. When I, <laughs> I, my parents dressed me in a bunch of boy stuff when I was like a kid. Like I look at my outfits and I'm like, oh my God, that was so gay. But like I wasn't choosing. I don't have I don't have a memory of like choosing or gravitating toward more feminine or masculine clothes. So it's like the opposite. Your parents were pressuring you to be more mask <laughs> and mine were like, you have to wear a dress for Christmas. You cannot wear basketball shorts for Christmas. So that's how it was at your house. It was like it was kind of gendered in that way where they Well, it's Christmas. You know, yes. <laughs> I'm not like shitting on my parents for this. Like they were amazing, but like there are pictures of me just like, I'll actually show you what I have. A, a just like so angry in like, <laughs> and putting on a show. I was always such a ham because being the youngest of five kids to get a word in, it has to be big and mm -hmm. it like has to be funny because no one wants to listen to like the five-year-old. So it actually like got me into you know, acting in a way because I was like, well, you know, it's like the toughest audience in the world when oh. you're going up against older siblings. Totally. So what about in high school? What did that, what did high school Jack look like? Okay. So high school, I was all uh, like, since I'm the youngest of five, it was very easy for me to not have to make any decisions about my life because mm. everybody was, you know, I just like climbed the ladder that everybody else did in my family. Everybody else got like most athletic in our high school and was like, you know, star athlete, really smart into all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's me too. Mm. And I am a good athlete, but not as good of an athlete. And so when I got cut from the basketball team, 
I was like devastated. Mm-hmm. And I like thought I like let down my entire like family and all this stuff. And like, really, they didn't give a shit. They were like, you're slow and you don't have a good follow through. So like, we're not <laughs> bummed that you're not on the court anymore. It's like, thank God, you know, <laughs> they didn't say that at all. But, you know, looking back, I had too much confidence for my skill level. You know, what's so weird is I didn't know we had this in common also. I like, well, I come, my brother's a professional athlete and my dad was an athlete. My mom's an athlete. She's a marathon runner. So that's, I grew up very much in athlete culture. And so then I started playing sports in high school. I played volleyball and I was, I was good. Like I definitely could have played in college, but I quit my sophomore year. And I also felt like, oh my God, I'm literally disappointing my entire family because we are we are athletes. Yeah. You know? It's like, that's the brand, you know? Right. But it was like this moment of like, like the high school musical moment. I was like, okay, yes. then I'm going to go, I want to go be in the play and I want to go sing. And like, I chose that because this is when you went to act. Yeah. My mom like knocked on the door and was like, well, now you can try acting. And I was like, you know, she was like, what you really like want to do. And I'm like taking a shower, doors closed, I'm like falling, crying. And I remember just like that moment of being seen like in such a vulnerable state and like I'm seeing you and what you actually want, Mm. even if you're like not willing to make the jump yourself. And that feeling like that moment is the only thing I can equate to coming out. It's like, uh, you know, like being seen in this way is so uncomfortable. Why do you think that is? Is the being seen part just like being vulnerable, vulnerable about something that you want that not everybody else wants? Yeah, I think that's right. I think like anytime you take a big risk, you're like putting something on the table. So I think just like being seen as who you are at like a specific age range is really scary or it was really scary for me mm-hmm. um, to the point where I like refused to believe that it was hap- it was a thing. Like in high school, I was straight, absolutely no part of me thought I was gay. Mm-hmm. But two things happened. Number one, like the first time I was on stage, I created this character called Jan, the CHP Highway Patrol woman. <laughs> And it was a monologue and I crushed, (laughs) (laughs) but I like had the outfit and I'm like, she's trying to get a date. It's like a dating profile video is like the concept of the Mm -hmm. sketch. But the entire joke was that she was straight. It's like, that's the bit sort of, right? is that she seems so mass, but she's straight. And no part of me was like that. (laughs) I'm like, no, that's a totally fucking separate thing. This is not me. Not real. This is a fictional character. I literally was, I did not make this connection until I was thinking about this podcast. Wow. I like had no, I was like, yeah, what did happen in high school? And I was thinking, I was like, oh yeah, Jan, that was a good moment. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I am Jan. Yes. When art reflects life. What do they say? I know. Life yeah. Life. It was like such a, and it's kind of beautiful that like in my art, I was able to express this out of myself mm-hmm. while not being able to like consciously acknowledge it at all. And the second thing to happen was like one of the only out lesbians at my high school. And I feel so bad because I've told this story before and she reached out. She was like, sorry. (laughs) It was my birthday. She wasn't in my immediate group of friends. So like I wasn't expecting anything, but she gave me like a wrapped gift and I opened it and it was season one box set of the L word. (laughs) And she goes, just until you figure it out. And I was like, so I was being, you know, it's like those moments. Totally. You're being seen that are like. (gasps) That's that feeling again. Yes, exactly. Of being seen for something that you like want, but can't express. Yeah. And it's interesting that like when I was younger, when I was talking about wearing basketball shorts, no part of my brain was concerned about how I was perceived. Right. So I was like, I would like to climb a tree. Give me the basketball shorts. Right. As opposed to like. I want to look this way. So I'm perceived this way. It just was not a conscious thought. And then when I started being seen and perceived, it was like, oh no, I felt like I I sacrificed comfort and self-expression for safety, not physically, but like socially, Mm. I feel like I, I, that was more important to me. When do you think that switch happened? I don't know. Probably high school. Mm. Yeah. I think probably high school. I mean, I was still wearing like the most... (laughs) People from my high school are going to watch this and be like, mm, did it? <laughs> <laughs> did we do that? <laughs> but then you look at college and I'm in like bandage skirts and like a going out top. So like, then we like really, the pendulum swung way the other well, way. I'm a tried out, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> we have to protect the brand. 
<laughs> also like the tried out symbol is this. Uh-huh. And everybody was like, it looks like a vagina. And I was like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> you shut up. Don't fucking say that. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't know what that is. <laughs> anyway, I had to protect the brand of the sorority. I was like, I'm straight. Right. Yeah. You I, were committed to the bit. Yeah. Even in my own head. So when did you start exploring with women? So I started hooking up with a girl in college. And I remember telling my best friend, it was like one of the first people I come, <laughs> this isn't really coming out, but I got home and I was like, so I've been seeking, secretly hooking up with blank and, um, and it works cause neither of us are gay cause we're both straight. And she was like, that makes perfect fucking sense to me though. And I was like, sick. And it was like, it made <laughs> sense to the other, to your friend. Yeah. She's just a ride or die. She's like, that makes perfect fucking sense to me. I'm like, yeah, me too. Right. It was just like. You know, the universe coming at me with like, you're gay, you're gay, you're gay. Right. And me being like, no, I'm not. And she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> of course you're not, bro. <laughs> but I don't know if you had this experience the first time you were like making out with a girl, but there's like something that happened in my body where I was like, oh, I want to do more. Mm -hmm. And I think like that urge or spark or whatever is like very scary and like, oh shit. Mm-hmm. But I think I just like still wasn't, <laughs> I was like not kind of willing to admit that. But that was the first time it was like, oh God, mm -hmm. you know, this is like something that is like internal right, and physical. And then I think she's not as gay as I am. And so that was another thing to be like, yeah, we're, we're chill. You right. Know? So when I was living in the house, it's like, I didn't, I didn't start making out with this girl until it was like senior year. Okay. And then I leave for work. I was living in Portland, a block. This is also the universe. <laughs> I'm also not like a witch bitch like you are. <laughs> I like it. I'm like, oh yeah, this all makes so much sense to me. You said, you were like, yeah, the universe is really showing you. And I was like, wait, I guess it was. <laughs> there was a wild thing. Do you know what a wild thing the store is? Oh yeah. Their first, I think it was their first brick and mortar was like a block from the hotel I was living at. And I was alone in a city where I didn't know anyone. And I like walked there and I remember like buying clothes for the first time. And I was like walking around the city and I could be whoever I wanted <laughs> because like nobody knew who I was. Right. So I was kind of like exploring my gender expression in this time because it was the first time I didn't feel like I was forcing myself to be feminine in order to fit in. I feel yeah. like that's such a common thread of like people who just kind of break out of wherever they're from and nobody knows them. And you're just kind of you're cooking. You're cooking with gas. Yes. <laughs> it's like, I don't have any eyes on me in this way. Yep. I can be whoever I want to be with no expectation. And Wild Fang called you. <laughs> and Wild Fang hooked it up. I've like contacted them and been like, hey, you like provided a really safe, special place. They would like serve beers. Don't tell anybody that. I don't want to get them in trouble. <laughs> but like, it was like a really open, cool space that I wasn't ready to like fully immerse myself in. Right. But I specifically remember somebody texting my, one of my best friends and saying, so what is Jack on a lesbian now? And I almost chucked my phone against the wall. I was like, Phew! it just like lit me on fire. I was so angry. Because I just, yeah, it's that same thing of like being seen when you're not ready to be seen yet. Ah, and yes. it's not your choice. And it's like, you know, it just feels so out of your control that it feels really scary. Mm -hmm. And so I got back to school. I graduated and then, um, yeah, moved to L.A. It's just so interesting how it was like it was like you were trying so hard to come out of this box, like outwardly. And inwardly, it's just like you weren't on the same page. No, it's there was so like a interesting. dichotomy. I just was not even close because it's the thing is of like, I want to explore this so I can figure out that it's like not the thing. Mm. I just, yeah, once I had that experience where I wanted more from something, it was like, oh no. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah, now I gotta, now I got to either really marry this or follow it. Yeah, you got to follow it. Right. It's like... I don't, I think I could have not, yeah. you know, I was I mean, like yeah, realistically. into it. Um, yeah. How do you think gender and sexuality like correlate? Because why, why is there that like kind of gender bending that happens in the queer community and not? 
I don't in know. the straight world. I can only like speak for myself because I never had any gender dysphoria. Right. So I like, you know, somebody was like, well, you're gender non-conforming. And I was like, well, I'm sure. Like I've just been sort of like myself and had to grow into that and what I feel more comf- most comfortable in. But I think the sexuality part is like a really different thing mm-hmm. to me. But yeah, I don't know. I think maybe because I don't know if it's like you're wanting to present yourself in a way where you feel your most comfortable, feel your most comfortable in order to like attract Mm. who you want to attract and like subconsciously you're doing that. Or it's just like, because I do think like gender dysphoria and like, you know, being non-binary and being trans is like, I, I mean, I can't speak from experience, but I think it's a really different thing than sexuality. Right. Um, and so I don't want to like conflate the two and I don't know. I can only speak from my experience and it's with, you know, sexuality and how I represent myself, how I want to be perceived. I feel a little bit different about it. For me, it's almost like this tapping into this part of yourself that's like following whatever you want. Like, because, well, the world tells me I should date men and I'm already not doing that. And I'm like tapped into this part of me that kind of goes against what is like normal or perceived as normal. And then you're like, okay, well, why the fuck am I wearing these heels? Like these suck, (laughs) these hurt. And like, I don't want to wear them anymore. And so you kind of start stripping away this, like through like the man's eyes like like what what women are supposed to be through this like patriarchal filter yeah it's like if the male gaze doesn't exist how are you in the world yeah you can almost like get rid of that filter and be like well how do I want to show up and that's hard or do I just like dressing feminine I don't know I think I'm still like figuring that out but like I don't wear a lot of heels anymore it's a lot of like tennis shoes and like flip-flops and if anything like a wedge it's not it's just not the same as it used to be. And I think it's because I just don't worry about that anymore. It's so interesting. I think you're right. Like it's, it's giving yourself the freedom of expression because mm-hmm. you're already like on the outskirts of like, you know, the norm or you already feel like you've broken through. So it's like allowing fluidity in other parts of your life. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it goes back to the basketball thing too. Like you broke out of this like yeah. normal yeah. Shell of like this athlete. And now you're like going to go follow. It's kind of all in this same theme of like, I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want to do. Like, this might be what you guys think I should do. But yeah, somebody posted something on Instagram recently and it was a quote. It might have been you, honestly. I don't know if you saw this, but it was something like every single thing you want is on the other side of what you're trying to avoid. Oh, I like that. Let me think about and that. let me say that again. Yes. Every single thing you want is on the other side of what you're trying to avoid. And let me tell you, that is not the quote. The quote is much better than that. <laughs> Everything. Out. Everything you Can want. Can we pull up? Some, <laughs> we need a Everything researcher. you're avoiding. Oh, everything shit. you're trying to I'm avoid. I'm like, the beers are hitting. Okay, we could do this. <laughs> everything you want is on the other side of the magic you are looking for is in the work you are avoiding. Okay. No, that is fucking Also so love hard. that one. <laughs> it's not that, but I will, I will look it up. <laughs> you can avoid reality, but you cannot <laughs> avoid the consequences. No, the first one was right. Reality. The first one was right, but it was avoid. What you're avoiding. <laughs> it does make sense to me. <laughs> no, like what you're avoiding, what you know is like, you know, before you come out, and you know, and there's like that gap of time when mm-hmm. you know before you come out, that's something that you're avoiding. You totally. are actively trying not to think every single second of the day, or I am actively trying, was actively trying to not, not think about it. Yes. And then when I came out, it's like, oh my God, everything I've ever wanted is on the other side of this thing I'm trying to avoid. And that it's like, you know, I want to do acting, but I have to play sports and I can't stop thinking about it. And Mike McCarron's fucking cut me from the basketball team. But so it wasn't really a choice there. But the everything I've ever wanted. The universe is going to force you where you want to yeah, get to. It's like you kind of have to. I do think you have to have time to think about stuff. I don't think people like should feel pressured to come out or whatever until they're ready because you do need that time. But once you take that time, it's like your life gets so much better. Yeah. You're shedding all of these like expectations and norms and you're like, oh, okay, now I can just finally be me. And then that energy brings in so much more of like 
what you want. It's like this yeah. thing of, okay, I got rid of all of that. And now I'm open to receive all these beautiful things that yes. come with like following my truth. Yeah. I think it's the same sometimes in a relationship too. If you're in a relationship and you're avoiding breaking up, it's like, it's so scary to take a leap or a risk or whatever in any situation. But like once you know that it's the right thing and once you do it, it's like, you know, things are going to be okay. Yeah. Like you have to figure that out and there's, you know, grief and all this stuff, but it's like, yeah, you just have to face the hard stuff sometimes. What's the, okay, now we're searching Let's for another it. quote. Let's do it. Let's do it. Here we go. It's the I one where you. it's like. I have you. Okay. Mind meld, baby. I'm here. <laughs> it's like, if your hand is grasping. Mm, if I don't recognize if it you're, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay no, keep okay, going, keep okay. going, I have you. If you're holding on to something. Something too hard. Too hard? You don't, you can't, you don't. You do you what you did. <laughs> you did. You don't. You're gonna. Okay, go ahead. You don't have the room, mm -hmm. hands to grab on to the new thing. Yeah. Okay. Let's make that a quote. But did you get the theme of it? Yeah. It's like if I'm holding on to, if I'm grasping something too tight, I don't have a hand to hold to to pick up something new. Yeah. To pick up uh, you a better know. thing uh, or. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> That's the risk. <laughs> That's not the message of the episode, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she yeah. Left college. You left college to go. Well, so once you I came out, be here all once you came out, how did that affect your career? Well, how did I know you have a career? We haven't talked Wait, about your career. You kind of because I know you haven't that. watched any of my stuff, but I am like a, a reasonably successful actress, especially within the lesbian community. So I do not think it's a far jump. But go ahead. How did getting cast in more masculine roles help you in the journey of figuring yourself out? I think it took me a really long time. I think it started in college when I was like cast in two Shakespeare shows and I was cast as like Lysander instead of Hermia. And that was the first time I like cut off all my hair, grew out my armpit hair, I was doing like push ups, you know, <laughs> was wearing like a rib tank. <laughs> And then I was like Macduff instead of Lady M. And I was happy to be that because it felt like so much more comfortable in my body. But I still was not like equating that with, I was like, wow, I'm so good in that show. You know, I was like not <laughs> equating it. that with my sexuality at all. There were so many things when I couldn't see myself, they were like lesbian. It's the universe It's again. the universe. Just like knock, knock, knock. knock, knock. knock. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, remember me, bitch? Yeah. And I was like, mm, still no. Um... And so I think like those things, and then I was playing like, you know, gay characters on television. And then I was like ready to, I think, explore it fully um, and be really open and be open with my parents and my family. And it all felt so big because I'm like the youngest of 27 first cousins on one side. And so it felt like so many people to tell and such a big deal. Um, but then you just kind of, do it and it's okay. So I feel like your sexuality, you would have come out regardless. Like that shit is coming out. But the gender expression, like if not for these roles, do you think you would have really explored these different looks as much as you have? Because I think about myself, oh my God, if I started growing out my armpit hair, think of all of her and say, be like, uh, what's wrong with mouth? Like it would be a yeah, conversation. A and so crisis. I feel, yeah. Like, so I don't feel as free now, like in my older age too, like to explore those things. I, I agree. I never would have done it. And I also think it was, uh, after I came out, it was an interesting check-in because when you have armpit hair, it's something physical that people can identify with and you know if you're going to be accepted or not because you're in a mm. conversation and people are like mm. annoyed or like, you know, they're concentrating on it and you know it's like, okay, this is not my space. This is not like a, a safe space. Um, but I still had the excuse of being like, oh, it's for a role. Mm. So I was like safe to not be like, this is my choice. But it was like a nice sort of like ease and tester. So yeah, I don't think I would have explored it as much as I did. And now I feel like I'm in a place where I'm like the most comfortable with myself, where I'm now exploring the other side. It's like the first time I don't feel pressure to be feminine. I'm now like, Fem. you didn't mention my nails. Yeah. Yep. Fem tour 2024. <laughs> Fem tour 2024, baby. <laughs> I wore a hot pink dress the other day. 
I love that. Yeah. It's like the pendulum is swinging and like you're, I'm testing it here. I'm testing it here. I'm testing it here. And I love that. I think it's so freeing and so great to be able to check in with yourself and be like, okay, where I, where am I at today? Yeah. Do I want to wear this fucking dress? Do I want to yeah. wear basketball shorts? Yeah. Like what is comfortable for me? Yeah. And I think it's exactly what you were saying earlier with like, when you have the freedom to like come out, it opens up other avenues of freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, okay, I did this. I'm like living my true self and I'm okay. What else am I exploring? And it's all fluid. Right. Like I think it's ever changing. And yeah, so I think that was like really apt what you said. I love it. What is the advice that you have for someone that's figuring that out? Be patient with yourself. There's going to be like a dichotomy for a long time, but when you have two things that are at odds with each other and like something is playing on your mind and you kind of know the end game, it's like give yourself space within those two things mm -hmm. and then you'll land somewhere. But I think you need the time to ex explore yourself and don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. And when somebody makes a comment about anything about your appearance, you're like, this is what I like. So, yeah. you know, yeah, deal with it. You know? Like an inner knowing, which is hard to to yeah. come to. I feel like I still struggle with it a lot. Totally. It's like hard not to think black and white, masculine, feminine. Like, am I going to dress more boyish today? Am I going to dress girly? It's like hard not to live in that and to live in the gray more so and blend those two. I totally agree. I think it's like really difficult. I am by no means like not still thinking about that sometimes, but I think it's buying pieces that you really love no matter mm. what, no matter if it's feminine or masculine. It's like an oversized blazer. If you put with like, you know, tight little femi femme jeans is femme. Right. But it can also easily be mask. You know, it's just putting a lot of thought into something that is like any day of the week you'll feel good in. Yeah. It's buying pieces that like you identify with and you feel good in, whether it's your body or, or how you're perceived or whatever. It's like for you. I think it's internal. I love that because it makes it such a presence practice and like such an intentional act. You think about shopping and you're just like, oh, I'm going to go. I'm just going to go grab a bunch of shit. But mm -hmm. when you're thinking about each piece and you're so present and like intentional about what you buy, I feel like that's that's so much better. Yeah. Or buy something that's like either you know, your most mask self or your most femme self mm. and then go somewhere with it just for one night and yeah. see how it feels because it's also different. I went to a wedding this last weekend and I got my nails done Love. and it's like the first time that I've like done that in years and years and years. And I showed up in Miami and I'm like with my bags. I'm at the hotel bar, like eating my stuff, got dinner bought. Next night, somebody buys me drinks. What? I'm, I'm still like dressed like this, mind you. So I don't think it was the nails. <laughs> but that's when I was like, I'm tour 2024, baby. <laughs> I'm in my element. These sales work. <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> I love it. All right. We're moving into our segment. What are you working on in therapy? I think I'm working on, I would love your advice. Okay. As my therapist. <laughs> yes. I think I'm working, I'm like a... I'm a loyalist. I'm monogamist. I feel like I'm, I'm a relationship person. And so I think this time I'm like taking for myself um, and trying to really just like evaluate and and date, but not get into a relationship for, a, uh, I don't know, six months a year, you know, put a time. You're on like that. so hesitant to commit. I know. <laughs> to that. Okay. A year. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. And I think it's just like a really interesting, uh, challenge. Why do you think it's hard for you to do that? I'm a lover, baby. <laughs> I think I'm just like, I, I just, am, I'm like kind of an exclusivity person. I'm not going to like control what you're doing or anything, but I'm just like, I don't need, you know, to be hooking up with multiple people at the same I don't understand how it works I'm like so <laughs> out of my element okay but I but, feel like I'm the same way and yeah that. like I'm I'm not I hate the dating I don't atmosphere. Like, like play when games like oh god no, I'm not into that but I love to be alone like I really enjoy being like I don't have to set those boundaries with myself after I get out of something I'm like oh I want to be alone yeah and like I but will you date within that space? No. 
Okay. I, I don't, I'm like, I need the reset. I want to just like pour into myself and get like, get back to who I am without someone else. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing. It's like when you get out of something, especially in a lesbian relationship, it's like you're, you're trying to like re-identify with yourself. You're Mm -hmm. trying to get to like know yourself again. And, uh, yeah, like build your world back. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, you know, sort of build a new life, like a Phoenix from the ashes. (laughs) Another (laughs) beautiful quote or (laughs) that one was right. I think, (laughs) um, I love that. And I think that's so important because I think those times become even more important in your relationships because, I think that the habits you build when you're alone are the ones that you go back to when you're in a relationship. Mm. Like I'm in the healthiest relationship that I've ever been in, but it's also very like hard not to lose yourself in those relationships. And Mm -hmm. like, I want to be with you 24 seven. I want to do what you want to do. I want to kind of live your life, but I, and then you forget like, Oh, I like to meditate and I like to wake up early and I like to, exercise and I like to journal and like all these things like this morning routine and you have to like build that in this time alone to be able to remember what makes you you yeah. and like individuate within your relationship because I think that's like what sustains relationships it's like if you can be your own person like still within the relationship so yeah I love that I think, I it's, think so it's harder for you know the lesbian community as well like yes Cause it's so much easier to hang out with somebody of your own sex all the time. It's just like, you know, sleep over. Hey baby. Um, and so or just I'm like loving the nails. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I also think it's like not bringing shit into your next relationship as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like building your life and building your community in a different way. Yeah. So do you think you're, you're talking about your relationship and talking about, you know, whatever. What uh, The reason I'm working on this is because I'm wondering, and I'd love your opinion on this, can you do the work while with a partner? I think there's work to be done with a partner, but I think there's a lot of work to be done by yourself before you can do that work with your partner. Okay. So you're approving of my decisions. Yes. Okay. Because I think it's like, If you are still really heavily dealing with like attachment stuff and like just like kind of those um, issues that make you feel safe in a relation, like within a relationship, then it's hard to kind of move into that next level of work with a partner. Like I feel like Matilda and I are both pretty securely attached. And so that is like that helps to be able to be like, okay, we have this foundation and this is, this is good. Like we have tendencies and we move into those tendencies, but it's like, we're, I know you're here for me and I know I'm here for you. Yeah. There's no fear. No, like we're not going anywhere. We're committed to each other. That's not a thing. So then it opens up like new levels of work of a lot of like kind of internal family system stuff, like, like from your childhood that you can kind of dig up, like, okay, why do you trigger me in this way? And why, like, okay, I just threw that tantrum and I realized that was a tantrum and I, now I can go back and like, I know you're not leaving me so I can go back to therapy and figure out like, what was that? And then we can talk about what the fuck was that? And like, it's just deeper work that can be done within a partnership because you know that there's like, there's not fear around like, are we both here? Like, are are we in this? Yeah. (laughs) Um, well that answers my question. No, I definitely don't want to be in a relationship. (laughs) (laughs) No, but not have it like getting past already, like coming in and getting past that first level of like fear and abandonment and like attachment stuff. Yeah. It like opens up a whole new world of independence and allowing like each other to grow as full people. Um, and still being together. I think yes. that's really beautiful. That's what I'm working on in therapy. That's beautiful. <laughs> okay. You haul or you ghost? I'm, I, can I just say something? <laughs> I'm. It's just going to be you haul. Because I think oh God. it's like the game, because we've talked about this. The game is if you meet the love of your life, they're perfect, but they have this one thing. Yeah. And I'm a person that just like, well, just like. Okay, but sometimes that one thing. Be, when do I find out about it? Date one? 
Like, I need some parameters. Oh, that's a big... Let's say, like, a couple weeks in. Because with lesbians, you're already probably in love. Okay. Okay. She wakes up at 5.30 every morning. Oh, you haul. I think that's great. Hard you haul. Why is that? I'm like... Ask Matilda. She does not fuck with that. She's trying to make me sleep in the other bedroom. Because she wants to <laughs> and it all comes out. <laughs> That's the tea. <laughs> okay, okay, give me another one. Maybe I'll leave you for Jacqueline. <laughs> 5 a.m. I'm not leaving that in there. Okay, this one's interesting. She travels for work half of the year. Little spurts, big spurts. I mean, that's oh. me sometimes, so you haul. What if it's like... I'm like, that's a deal breaker? Oh, my God. <laughs> I feel like some people couldn't handle that. Yeah, well, then Every it's other like, month, you're gone for the entire month. <sighs> yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, you're gone for six months. <sighs> that's tough. Oh, my God. Am I going with? Mm, you're visiting. Maybe I could do that, but I think I would get old. Okay, well, thanks. <laughs> it's like, great. I think Did I, I mention that I'm single and might need a little boost here, a little confidence boost? And you're like, I would never, not in no. a million years would I do that. A lot of girls, <laughs> mm, red flag girls. Okay, what's the next one? She pronounces it supposedly. Mm, really fucking cute. I'm going to go you haul. This is actually something that I... I've been called out for two <laughs> by Matilda. Yeah. Supposedly. I think I just do it on accident. Do you know the actual word? Supposedly. Yeah. Okay. That took a minute. <laughs> I can see we're, we're having some okay, trouble well. connecting the dots there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Let's cheers with our yummy, hazy IPA. You love it. Yummy. You do have um, a lot of mask people on here. <laughs> Holding a lot of little wine glasses with rosé. And now I'm making you have a hazy IPA. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I want a 10 second chug out of you. Okay. See if you could do it. Okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh yes! Your mask is coming out, sweetie. I'm so proud of you. Good girl. Yes. I'm like, wait. Yeah, it's like the end of the episode. You're burping and I'm like, hey. <laughs> What happened? You know, it's like Freaky Friday. You have the, you have the fucking rosé glass and I'm like... Yeah. Thank y'all for listening to today's episode. As always, please help us spread the gay agenda by writing an Apple review, rating us on Spotify, and sharing with everyone you've ever met. You can find today's guest at Jay Taboni, our show at Made It Out Podcast, and me at Mal Glowinky. Made It Out is produced and edited by Matilde Jordan and worked on solely by lesbians. A light summer wind. Those clouds look like a nipple. <laughs> Girls get horny too. <laughs> that one is actually so good. <laughs> the end. <laughs>